Lucky number. All right. Okay. Yeah. Are we ready? We are ready. Okay. We can roll whenever you want to go. We can roll it. Hey, I don't have any major trauma happening this time, too, so it's good. This is great. <laughs> I, don't have any. I got Emily Terrell in the house, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. I really need that. Yes. That's so great. I will be totally okay with that. That's how you introduce me. I'll be All fine. Right. I'll be fine. All right. <laughs> if you're looking for... <laughs> Are we going? Okay, there we go. If you're like me, you're looking for ways to win in your real estate business in 2024. Today, I've got Coach Emily Terrell in the house. How are you, my dear? I'm doing great. So I think people need to get context. You are married. You got kids. You're going to sell 50 plus houses this year. You're like 52 already. And you're coaching... What is it? I want to make sure I get this right. 37 different agents that are averaging 26 transactions a year. The first question people are going to ask is like, when do you sleep? Like, how do you manage all that? But that's not the point of the show. We want to talk about what an agent has to do to be successful in 2024. So you've got your personal transaction business and your years of experience, but you're also helping guide and navigate all these men and women that you're working with. So if I just said to you, just open-ended, what does someone have to do to win in 2024 in real estate? So it, and this podcast actually comes out at a perfect time because we're mm -hmm. business planning. Right. And I know business planning seems super boring, but mm -hmm. it realistically is the place where I would tell people to start. Mm -hmm. Something that I'm doing with all of my coaching clients right now, and it's been really successful for them, is figuring out what business they've done mm -hmm. in 2023. Right. But I want to be clear. We don't just that, sit down. What does that mean? Yes. What does that mean? We don't – we – we don't just sit down and go, okay, I've got eight from my sphere of influence, mm -hmm. four from expireds, yeah. two door knocking. Mm -hmm. We go deeper. So we start with, for example, sphere of influence. And we look at where that sphere of influence truly came from. So for example, one of those was from a high school friend mm -hmm. that has been following you on your socials, Instagram, Facebook, any yeah. of them. Another one or two of them are from, you know, my kids do Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Mm -hmm. So I spend five days a week there mm -hmm. and my husband. So it's a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, two of my transactions came from my sphere of influence from Brazilian jiu-jitsu. Yes. So we look at not only the category in which you got your deals, but mm -hmm. also the subcategory. Yes. So I love that because most people will just say, Hey, where'd your business come from? Oh, it came, you know, from my sphere and my database. Correct. And I'm like, did it? Like, did it really? Like, or were there subsets of your database that produced a greater yield that you probably spent more time with? Maybe just more time at the jujitsu as an example. So, so step one is to go more granular and break down the the actual transactions. Correct. As a coach, as a business person, for the person listening, what is the outcome you want from that? Is it awareness? What What are you looking for them to get from that experience? Ideally, we take those, the data, mm -hmm. and we start translating it into a marketing plan. Now, mm -hmm. people get overwhelmed. When they sit down, they yeah. put their entire marketing plan. So that's what the subcategories come from. Mm -hmm. We create micro marketing plans. So yeah. just an example. I have a coaching client named Jenny Hensley. She's out of Raleigh, North Carolina. Mm -hmm. Love her to death. She does pot buys. Yes. And so through this process, we actually found that this year she did eight transactions from a combination of pot buys and social media mm -hmm. with, when she posts about them, mm -hmm. the entire plan. And she did 125000 in GCI from that one lead source alone. Yes. So from that. But do we know how many how many times she stopped by and oh, did all a little it. giftology stuff? Like All of it. Yeah. We do. We know that we can pinpoint because of these activities mm -hmm. we've done, we can actually pinpoint that when she's doing pot buys between putting them together or dropping mm -hmm. them off, she mm -hmm. averages like $2,300 an hour. Yes. And Smart. that's really important. Now, mm -hmm. that comes from tracking. Yes. And it's, so it's a start of the first exercise we did is figuring out where it came from. Then you create your micro marketing plans and determine what you need to track. Now, do you need to track the entire year? No. You can do about three months yeah. to give yourself a great average. Mm -hmm. 100K in 100 days. It's a perfect example of it. Exactly. I mean, it. it's, I know that my coaching clients between a combination of calls and text messages average 168 calls and text messages per listing. Yes. And we per know listing that. taken. Per listing taken. That's bananas. 168 and then of calls and texts. Calls and texts. Because the texts are the game changer right now. They are. I, I know we're gonna I know we're gonna unpack that, but I want to go back. So Kay. so the person listening, I'm gonna Emily, there's a good chance that the person listening right now is not real analytical. 
right? They just, they they are, they're so dynamic, right? They're so good with people. They're not that great with the accounting side of the business. And, and we're saying the first thing out of the gate is you got to get super detailed and granular and figure out where did your transactions come from? But yep. don't be, don't be lazy, said with love and respect, don't be lazy and actually say, no, but wait a minute, where did it really come from? Correct. Right. Because if you got 850 people in your phone and you did 19 transactions and 12 of them came from your sphere, did they come from your phone or, or what were the micro correct. campaigns intentional or not that you yep. did? And I'm assuming, so step three, we can do more of them. Correct. And and that's going to be step three, because I mean, for example, if you find out that you're, you know, there's a, a coaching client that I have, um, her name is Valerie. Mm -hmm. She's doing pot buys at mm -hmm. schools. Yes. She's actually determined that in the five years she's done them, she's only ever gotten one transaction. Mm. But here's the problem. When we started unpacking that, yes. because we just sat down and talked about what she's doing, what she's doing is she's putting the pot buys in the teacher's mailboxes. Mm -hmm. And they know that she's there, but she's not creating any type of plan to actually reach out and give some FaceTime. Right. To she's, follow up right. and actually nurture. She's not, and, yeah, she's not yeah. creating those relationships. Yeah. She's doing almost like when people set up drip campaigns, they mm -hmm. use it as a crutch. Yeah. She's using it as, well, I put the pot buys there. That's enough. Yeah. But it's not enough. Yes. She needed to actually go in and create it. So we've just adjusted that marketing plan. Mm -hmm. And so now she's actually going in when teachers are having in-service days, faculty meetings, and dropping off donuts or goodies for everybody. Yes. Instead of those individual ones, she during the summit where it was about helping teachers buy houses, right? And being the resource for them. So he was doing a lot of that. Is is your client trying to do that? Or is she trying to, you know, sort of be into the fabric and the ethos of the school? So any one of the, you know, kids' parents wants to buy and sell, like what's her strategy? Um, realistically, she Right now, her strategy is just going towards teachers. Got it. So it's helping teachers buy and sell. Now, if the byproduct of parents, but right now the mm -hmm. goal is teachers. Got it. I also, you probably guess, mm -hmm. but a lot of people, they dabble. I know Jason Pantana loves yes, that word. Yes. They love to don't dabble. Be don't be a dabbler in 2024. <laughs> go all in, go deep, or don't do it at all. Correct. Yes. Yes. So with her, we're focusing on the one lead source. Yes. We're not trying to over-index and you know, just put her to where she's trying to do 10. Yeah. We're focusing on the one. We're systemizing it. We're making it highly profitable, mm -hmm. tracked, measured, basically buttoned up. Yeah. And then once she does that, then we can add another layer to it. Yes. Then we can add the layer of working towards parents Got and it. working towards other schools. But I'm trying to not have her lose focus on teachers. We're focusing on that one lead source and not overanalyzing and overindexing what we can do. So where does, uh, just, you know, just kind of, you know, friend to friend, for the person listening right now, if you're thinking about adding new sources of business next year, because I know that's going to be a part of this equation. Oh, yeah. I'm curious, with every lead source, do you look at like what the addressable market is? Like we would call it the TAM, the total addressable market. That's a, a very business savvy. Mm -hmm. What's the TAM? Like how many, how many actual people could I serve? Like when I think about teachers, is this, is this like in Texas and there's like five high schools in the same you know area and there's 8 million kids and they all play football and lacrosse, right? Is it one of those mega schools or is, does she have this super micro number of teachers that I don't know, 30, 60, 80, 100, 200, that's like a really small farm. Is there a big enough addressable market to really turn that into something? For her, she's actually doing, in a school district, multiple elementary schools. Okay, so that makes so more sense. So she does. She okay. has that. And realistically, it's it's two parts to that. Mm -hmm. So it's having the numbers, and it kind of depends on what your lead source is. So yes. it's having a big enough TAM mm -hmm. to where it makes it worth it. But then also, it's your access to your TAM. Yes. So if you have a better relationship and it's more accessible... I mean, for example, your well, your past clients. I mean, mm -hmm. that's a really small group, and if you put the effort into it, mm -hmm. then that really small group can can multiply. Yeah, can so be geometric. Uh, yeah, one of my Amanda Pinkerton, right? Mm -hmm. Love her to death. She's actually in Queen Creek, Arizona. Yes, she does thirty five transactions a year yes. without fail. Yeah, with a four hundred and sixty eight person database. Love it. That is it. Mm -hmm. 
And she knows that because of now, the- But that's it because you can break down the detail. No one showed up at an open house that she didn't know. She doesn't do open houses. Okay, so that, you, I wanted people to hear this. Yes. Yeah. She only works her 468 person database. Yes. That's yes. it. Everything that she does goes towards that database. Yes. To get her a consistent 35 transactions a year. Love it. So we're working on yeah. make 468 a thousand. Yes. Make it 2,000. Yes. But without losing the one to one relationship. Quality, connection, personalization. Correct. Yeah. So how do you do that? How do you how do you expand? How do you select who to go in? And then how do you go from, hey, I'm already busy with 35 transactions and nurturing 468 relationships, and now I'm going to add 500 more to it? So it's like, not- That sounds like a lot. Correct. And this is a long-term goal. Because yes. remember, you know, coaching is long-term. Yes. She and I are not planning for this year yes. to build up to 600, yes. 700. We're talking about her long-term goals, mm -hmm. the five, 10-year mm -hmm. goals. Good. So what we're doing is, first thing is we're looking within her- actual ecosystem in her sphere and who's not in there. Yeah. Who does she need to build and nurture that relationship? Yeah. And then the once somebody is at a point where she can say, you know what, I can text them at any time mm -hmm. and connect and just say, hey, let's go play pickleball. Yeah. And they'll show up. Yeah. If she has that relationship, then they go in. Once they're at that point, they go in. Mm -hmm. She's not dumping just, oh, I met you at an open house and we shook a hand and said hi. Yeah. It's people she actually connects with. And then of course- Does she have a sub database of those people that, I know she doesn't do open houses, but we get we, we meet so many peripheral yeah. people, she, right? Like, like, do they go into a separate, like a prospecting database as an example? Uh, not really. We're not focusing on that. Mm -hmm. She does have niches within the database though. Of course. And so we focus on that of how to provide that relationship within those different niches. So mm -hmm. she specializes on horse properties. Got it. So she's got a portion of her database that is strictly focused around that. Mm -hmm. And then she's got other, you know, parts of the database that are friends and family that mm -hmm. are not necessarily going to buy or sell with her, but we're looking for referrals. Yeah. So we just take that database and, the, and then past clients, they're done. They're still in her database and they're worked, but they're um, just, they worked in a slightly different way than she may work some of the other niches within that database. So the thing that keeps coming up for me, and I, I, I think for the, for my friend listening right now, it is know where your business came from, know how you got it. And then creating a bunch of niche sort of micro marketing plans, which by the way, could be for a geographic farm, for open yeah. houses, for Everything. Google leads. I mean, pick any one of the, you know, 50 plus lead sources. Yep. Um, so how does one put together this sort of mini micro plan? So going back to our numbers, mm -hmm. uh, the first thing I would recommend looking at is your seasonality mm -hmm. because you need to have time to do whatever you say you're going to do. You have yep. to have time to do it. Yes. So look at your seasonality. That's very simple. Very simple plan. Mm -hmm. You figure out when you sold houses, January, mm -hmm. February, you mm -hmm. just do it by the months. Yes. So you figure out when you're going to be busiest. Now, leading and lagging indicators. Right. If you're closing one today, you're not busy getting it today. You're busy getting it, you know, 115 days earlier yep. than that. Yep. Yep. So we want to make sure that we understand when we need to push for additional marketing, when we need to, you know, understand that we're busy. Mm -hmm. For example, Jenny's pot buys, mm -hmm. Jenny Hensley, mm -hmm. she is busy extremely busy in October. Mm -hmm. A lot of her marketing pushes to really heavy Octobers. So she reduces the number of pot buys that she does. Mm -hmm. And truly, she only does about five pot buys a year yeah. total. Yeah. And then she does giveaways with social yeah. that are connected to those same people. So she sits down, she grabs a calendar, and she says, okay, I don't want to do a Christmas pot buy because Everybody does them. Bingo. I want to give a custom wine bottle in January. Smart. Because now when people are stressed, they're having to put up all their Christmas decor. They're like, thank God, wine. Yes. And so they love it. Now, obviously, only for your wine lovers. Yes. My buddy, John Rulin, who wrote the book, Giftology, would say, careful with alcohol because yep. not everybody drinks it. And of course, he did that live on a show when I just said, yeah, I moved into this new building and I got everybody in my building a bottle wine. of booze. Right? And he was like, don't do that. And I'm like, oh, it kind of oh, worked. <laughs> right? But I understand yeah. what he's saying. Yeah. But and for her, she doesn't yeah. do everybody. Not everybody gets a pot by yeah. every time. Yeah. It is customized. Yeah. But so she, she you know, takes that into account. And then she knows that February, she's only going to do a a giveaway on Facebook or Instagram. She's going to do a poll. She's going to mm -hmm. do something where she gives something away. Yeah. It's she has that's what she has time for and bandwidth. Yeah. Because she doesn't want to 
do something half ass. She wants to be all in. So it it feels like if you took like a, a bell curve and you actually looked at across the world real estate, and again yep. in Arizona, it's it's going to be a little bit different. Yep. It's going to be right, but if you're in like the Northeast, if you're in Florida, it's going to be different. Yep. But it's basically plant seeds. Yep. You know, cash out and then start planting seeds again. Yep. Right. Like those are the same, basically the two cycles. So but you, you can't gotta, stop in the summer. You can't. Well, the second you stop marketing, you push You're, off 115 days from your next closing. Yep. Right. Or you, as we've seen so many times, I work every one of my leads. Some don't close, some do close. And then I wake up and I've got no pipeline. Right. So we always have to be marketing, yep. but it's being mindful that I've got to be more I don't know if the word is aggressive, but it's strategic. It's more intentional, yep. certainly in the fourth quarter, certainly in the first quarter, because for the most part, spring and summer, people are hair on fire busy. Yep. Interrupting my own show with a quick little announcement. If you're like me and you recognize this is the time of the year when we've got to make decisions, we got to look back at what's worked in the past and decide what we want to have happen in 2024 then yes, it is time for you to get your plan together. Now, if you're one of my coaching clients, you know you just go inside a Loom, you download the 2024 plan, you and your coach work on that together. If you are not one of my clients, go to tomferry.com. There's be a link below. Download a copy of the plan. Get to work on it. Use ChatGPT and other resources to answer the tough questions about the strategies you need to implement to ensure your success in 2024. So tomferry.com. Get your business plan and let's get to work. Now let's go back to the show. Well, and that's also another problem. And it's something that I work with my coaching clients on is creating transaction management plans mm -hmm. and systems that are more automated, um, that are more, and that's how I run my transaction. Mm -hmm. You asked in the beginning, like, where do I have time to sleep? Yeah. I leverage people and technology to yeah. make my life more efficient. So let's switch gears and let's talk about that. Sure. How do you sell as many homes as you do, help all these people, take your kids to, you know, I almost said Taekwondo, but to jujitsu. And then, mm -hmm. and then I, I watch you on Instagram. It seems like I'm like, I travel a lot, but you really travel a lot. <laughs> so, so what are some of the hacks? Cause everyone's looking for like, what are some of the things I can do to get more time back? So you said technology and people, but everybody says that. What technology? Sure. What I people? Can... How do you pay them? How does it work? Yeah. So I'll give some very specific. Please. Okay. So, and I'm going to do this because it's a mindset shift. Yeah. Right. To get to the point where I am, everybody wants to do it. Nobody effectively does it. Yeah. To get to the point, it's a mindset shift. Mm -hmm. It's understanding that, let's say I wanted to double my business. I'm just going to make more work for myself. If yeah. I wanted to double one lead pillar, I'm going to make more work for myself. Right. But if I 10 times it, it becomes about the who, mm -hmm. not necessarily the how. Mm -hmm. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to leverage people. So I brought on a partner because I learned mm -hmm. that, so, and this really came about when my mom was sick. Yeah. I gave up six weeks of my life, 100% devoted to her. Yeah. And it was the absolute best six weeks of my life yeah. because it was her last. So I needed help because I couldn't leave her. She couldn't be left to mm -hmm. go and show houses. Mm -hmm. So I found a hungry newer agent. I say younger, but she's older than me, but mm -hmm. newer agent. Yep. And I leveraged that person to show homes for me. And then I needed to start leveraging other people and technology to do transactions as well. Because mm -hmm. for me, that's a big time suck. Big time. I also needed to leverage those transactions for more business mm -hmm. as well. So now I'm going to, I'll name drop some tools yeah, yeah, that please, I use. Yeah, please, please. It's not about the tools. I know. It's right. I know. So, but I use a program called Next, mm -hmm. any K S T. I love it. It works perfectly for mm -hmm. me. I start a transaction and I started at pre listing appointment. And then there's a pre listing, then listing and seller contract to close. Because mm -hmm. I do Most all, yeah, almost all sellers. Yeah. I'll do okay. like one buyer. But I put my transaction in, into this system. Nothing runs in my head. Mm -hmm. I have too many things going on. I have to remember my own business and 37 coaching clients' businesses at right. all times. Right. I can't remember that. Yeah. I can't remember my business. So I put that into there. And every day, I don't log in anymore. Mm -hmm. My partner, Marissa, who runs that portion of it, she will log in and knows exactly what transaction we have going on and exactly what needs to be done every single day. Mm -hmm. It has automatic text messages, automatic emails. We're doing custom emails now. We're using things like Be Human AI mm -hmm. technology yeah, to create custom emails that have people's names in it. Yes. So they'll know because what's the number one thing that people, buyers and sellers, they complain about with their agent? Lack of communication. Lack of communication. So I 
stop that by just creating automatic communication. Good. They really just want to know what's happening next. Right. So we have videos that tell them, hey, your option period, which is in Texas, like an yeah. inspection period, yep. it's over. Here's what happens next. Yep. So pre-baked videos that educate your customers that just are automatically sent yep. at the appropriate time. But yep. there's so many people we talk, we talk about this and so many good agents have done this. Um, so how did you select next, any KST versus Transactly versus, I mean, there's sure. so there's, many, yeah. and again, they're all, they're all great. Whichever one you use is it's great. Yep. Right. It's perfect. Yeah. Which one, whatever one you use and you actually use the tool yes. effectively yes. is the perfect one. Yes. <laughs> I try to use uh, Trello mm -hmm. and I don't do Can-Am boards very well. Yeah. I found this about myself. Yes. So I Googled, I was like, real estate, transaction, website, physical checkboxes. Because I wanted that yes. visual, like yes. I wanted to check. click it and the check yeah. comes up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And this program come came up and I was yeah. like, oh, let's check this out. Yes. There's a free version. Perfect. I can uh -huh. try it. Yep. And so I just went through, I created custom plans that are mm -hmm. for me. Yep. And then I just started using it. Now, however, I will say this. It was a mindset shift. Mm -hmm. It was, well, you know, I don't really need to remind myself to um, remind the other agent to schedule the final walkthrough. Yeah. I, I just know to do that. But so I had to shift my thinking mm -hmm. that yes, even though I know and I can run it in my head, I don't want to. Because the next thing that I did, once I created this system, I went, why am I doing this myself? Yeah. I need to, I need to leverage somebody. Mm -hmm. And you know, one struggle that some of my coaching clients have when they hire their first person is they hire an assistant or a VA with the expectation that that person's going to come in, for one, they're going to learn by osmosis. Never. It, it was perfectly every right. time. Yes. I'm just kidding. Yes. Or they're going to come in and help you fix the job. Mm -hmm. They're going to come in and put the job together by just knowing what you need. Yeah. But they don't. They don't know what they you need. They don't run transactions. They're not right. living inside your head. Correct. Yeah. And yep. so what ends up happening most of the time is because they they don't know what you want. They're not learning by osmosis. And I did this, I will tell you, on my first two assistants, mm -hmm. so I can speak from experience. Yeah. I would, instead of spending the time to train them, I would just do it myself. And then eventually in my head, I went, well, if I'm already doing it, why am I paying somebody yeah. to not really do anything? I might as well not have one. So for me, I had to do a mindset shift. So once I created Next, I was like, I don't need to actually do it. Not one, not one right. task on here do I right. actually need to do. Perfect. Here is the assistant's job when they walk in. And that right. was the first thing. Right. And so now really cool, ops, like amazing tools with AI. We can mm -hmm. use something like Scribe mm -hmm. to create SOPs. It's yep. my favorite thing yes. to create SOPs. Yes. Yep. You can use Scribe to do SOPs. If, they're, if you want, you can film yourself doing the task on Zoom mm -hmm. and then have them watch that. I want my, anybody that works for me, mm -hmm to be able to have at least three different ways that they can figure a task out for themselves before they need to ask me. Read it, see it, watch it. Yep. Something like that. Yeah. And then, hey, guess what? Before they ask me, yeah. they go ask chat GPT or yes. they're going to ask Google. Right. And then only then can they ask me. Now, I don't want them to spend four hours figuring this out, but if you give a good college try and you can't, you can ask me. Right. But at least at, try it first. So I love the I love the specificity of that. Go back to the partner. So you started with okay. partner, then you mentioned assistant. So is your assistant your partner, your partner your assistant? Because okay. I kind of thought it was maybe a junior agent who you were like, look, I'm going to pay you a small amount of money to go on do showings, which which is a, another great way yeah. to, to leverage. So unpack this. And I want to know like how do you pay them? Okay. They're gonna they're gonna everyone's going okay. Well, how do you pay this person? You're like Absolutely. oh my goodness, right? Yeah, and I'm su I I love to be yes. open about this. So I have uh, I've had. Two partner, like true partners, AAs mm -hmm. before, yeah. Yeah. and not that either one of them crashed and burned, but they didn't. They weren't long term. Yes. So what I learned is this: I'm an A. I mean, I'm a high D. If yeah. You haven't guessed, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. like a 99 kind D. Of, kind yeah. Of, yeah. 99 D, 99 I. But so I can't have another A. Yeah. Plus, also, why do you want two A's? You one of have, them's. You can't have two Attila the Huns. You're right. <laughs> There's only going to be one. Yeah. So <laughs> yes. I do an A and a B. Mm -hmm. So Marissa does and coordinates. Our VAs, mm -hmm. transaction coordinators mm -hmm. that we have, but she's the B, which means that if there's a problem or there's a decision that needs to be made, mm -hmm. she asks me. Got it. What's great is that I've trained her and given her all of the tools 100% mm -hmm. that I don't actually need to, number one, see her mm -hmm. ever. I see her maybe once every two months. Yeah. Does uh, she work remotely? Well, she's in San Antonio. Okay. She's so just she's on the yeah. other side of town. Okay. 
All right. So I could see you. her every day. Yeah. Yes. But I, we just don't. There's no yeah. need to. Yes. And then honestly, I'll go a week without actually having to talk to her. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes I'm like, hey. there's got to be a control freak watching right now going, <gasps> 100%. There yeah. is. Yeah. You have to create a system of checks and balances. Yeah. Next is that I mean, for me. Slack, email, All text. You're in communication with her. Yep. You just don't oh, yeah. see her. Right? I don't see her. Yes. And and she truly could. I've trained her enough and given her the tools that mm -hmm. she can do a lot of it on her own. Yes. She uses follow-up boss. We mm -hmm. work expired. Mm -hmm. I, I'm going to plug this. Look at expireds in your market. Oh. oh, yeah. Let me do this. Look at expireds in your market. Don't just look at them. Work go, them. Go help They're them. coming out. Yeah, They're them. pushing up. San Antonio mm -hmm. is averaging 25 new expires a day. Wow. Yes. Okay. Wow. But that was my soapbox. Okay. All right. Um, but I've trained, so I know that she calls every mm -hmm. day. And guess what? She doesn't have to figure out who to call. We've created SOPs mm -hmm. and we've created in follow up boss, we've created messages or uh, not messages, action plans that mm -hmm. she just knows. She logs in and she's like, these are all the people I call. Yes. And it's perfect. Yeah. And if, if we bring other agents in, we don't have to guess. These are the people you call. This is who you reach out to. Okay. So, so again, I'm going to go back and say at the very beginning of this was some people are just not good at math and the calculation and the organization, but they are phenomenal at people. Yep. Right. You seem to have the combination of the two and that's the high I side, right? That's figured out like, you know, you got to yeah. be warm and friendly and conversational. Yeah. How do you recommend the person listening right now, if they want to win in 2024, so they got to analyze where their business came from. Correct. They got to create some micro marketing plans, which I love that. You got to figure out the seasonality of your business. When do you really got to go hard versus go lighter because you're busy showings and selling and all Correct. the other stuff. Um, but then we talked about you and you're like, well, you got to have a transaction management, management platform. You got to have a partner or an assistant because otherwise, how do you sell 52 or 60 homes in a year and have a great marriage and have time with your kids and, and, and coach and travel, right? Like it's just impossible. Yep. So, so to the person that isn't coaching, you know, maybe has two kids, maybe yep. it's a single mom or dad. Should they have a partner? Should they have an assistant? How do they pay them? So with me, because of the amount, and I'll be honest, the way mm -hmm. I work with Marissa, because of the amount of work that she does and mm -hmm. the amount that I'm able to take hands mm -hmm. off, she takes 50% of my business. That's beautiful. But I also only work real estate wise. Mm -hmm. I've been able to cut it down to 10 to 15 hours a week. Yeah. So 100%. Like what do you do in the 10 to 15 hours? I'm guessing appointments would be my first thought, but I'm sorry for interrupting. Nope. I actually haven't been on a listing appointment in a year. Even better. I trained Marissa mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. do my listing appointments my way. And if people ask, well, where's mm -hmm. Emily? Mm -hmm. We have the best answer. Yeah. She goes, oh, oh, you don't, you don't want to talk to Emily. Why? Because if you're talking to Emily, there's a problem. Oh, I love Emily that. Emily only comes in when there's a problem. So- I mean, I can, and you even did that with such a serious face for the people that they're listening right now. Yeah. You went from like, like, you know, Hey, hey a, to, Oh, oh no, that's a problem. we only get Emily involved when there's a problem. Yeah. She's kind of like, she's Mrs. Fix it. Yep. You're Mrs. You're Mrs. Clean from Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Right. And, yeah. And then realistically, like that's, <laughs> that's where, and she, and she, guess what? Yeah. Higher order thinking skills. Yeah. Marissa, I will give her all the credit. She yeah. came up with that idea Yes. because yes. people were asking her. And so she's like, I, what am I going to tell him? You I know need what I mean? Yeah, you yeah. only fix things. Yes. And so she did, and it works amazing. Yes. Nobody asks yes. to speak to me, even though my name is there too. Yeah. Not one person asks yeah. anymore. But so back to it. So coaching client Jason Saroy, he's in Denver, Colorado. Mm -hmm. um, he was actually just on a panel with Jason mm -hmm. Pantana at yes. Edge. Yes. So actually, and at Summit, I forgot about that. Yes. Um, so Jason. His highest and best use. Uh -huh. It was one of the first calls we ever had. I was actually fortunate enough with Jason. I saw him in person. Mm -hmm. We did two coaching calls and then I met him in person. Yeah. I happened to be traveling yes. again and yes. I was in Denver and yeah. I met him. He is amazing. He is. so paralyzed by the details mm -hmm. he gets that analysis paralysis yeah, yeah. that he is not more effective with other lead sources mm -hmm. so his solution and what we worked with him was we had two parts right we looked at all the work that he does like him truly and we said okay this is all your work this 20 percent that you're doing which was meeting people and 
having you know, conver- having, having conversations, conversations, building rapport, discovering yep, problems, is yep. getting you eighty percent of your business. Yeah. So we need to find someone else to do all the rest of that work that's yes. going to get you even more business. Yes. And so, and it took a while. It took us six months to find the right mm-hmm. assistant. Mm-hmm. But since then, he has, he's actually having his best year mm-hmm. this year. Yeah. And this comes after having a four month drought. Sure. So he went no business for four months. We. And then I come out of the J curve yep. and they're like, oh my God, that was a really good idea. But right here, oh yeah, most people never take the action. Right here, yep. most people quit. Yep. They quit on themselves and they fall them, find themselves back up here again after clawing yep. back. So congrats on getting through yep. it. Well, and so one of my other coaching clients, uh, Chelsea Ross, mm-hmm. actually also on yep. a, a panel too. Yep. Um, but she's actually in the bottom right now. Yeah. And she knows it. Yeah. And we're there. She is a big picture thinker. Yep. She's very similar to me, mm-hmm. which means that being in that you know, the small daily task of calling is a, is a struggle for her. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's her assistant actually has to sit there and stand over her while she makes these calls. Yes. So I was like, why are we doing this? Why are we trying to force something that's not the best fit for you? Yeah. So yeah. she hired a lead management specialist. Perfect. And we've been working on what that means. Mm-hmm. And it's not just an ISA. This is the person. The goal is, is that mm-hmm. this person's going to manage the people that run the leads. Right. And right. so this, and it's become more effective. She gets a lot of her business from Zillow. She is crazy enough at like 32% conversion rate with Zillow leads. That's not crazy. She well, she's got, a, she's got a she got a lead manager yeah. who's actually no, no, nurturing, this is before nurturing, the, nurturing. This oh, okay. is before wow. the lead management That's special. Really good. Oh, it's it, yeah. like I said. That's bananas. When she told me, I I I couldn't speak for two minutes because I was yeah. so shocked. Because yeah. the average is what, five to six percent? So it's it's yeah. maybe 10. Yeah. It's crazy. But then we learned that all of those leads were the quick conversion. Mm-hmm. All of the other leads, she wasn't following up long term. She yep. didn't have time. Yeah. So we had to leverage somebody else to get follow up on all of that. So now we're also packing those leads for the future so that she doesn't have the big drop. That's a good insight for everybody listening. Um, we did a study uh, late last year and again, secondly, in the beginning of this year where we mentioned the 115 days on average for all leads before you get them under contract, mm-hmm. right? So every day you don't make your calls, every day you don't follow up, every day you don't send an email, every day you don't, 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 don't. You're pushing off a transaction by 115 days. Like that's just the data. The but the interesting part of it was um, one particular one particular cohort of clients, uh, they had generated a large number of leads in a quarter. Let's call it 4,000, but it was like a 4,900 and whatever the number was, right? But a large number. And they closed 91 transactions, called like 1.2, 1.3%. And, and many people would be satisfied because some of those leads came from open houses and Facebook. This wasn't past clients and referrals. Like this was like all those other sources. Cold leads. But what was fascinating was when we looked, all those, all those leads generated, mm-hmm. we went 12 months out and then looked back back at that quarter into the title records to see how many of them com- had converted. For every one that they got, four people bought a house from somebody else. Yep. For every one that they got, four people bought a house from somebody else. And what it also called out was, we need lead nurturers. Yep. We need more than just an email and a texting campaign. You actually need someone to call and say, oh my goodness, Sarah, how's it been? Yep. Hey, I just noticed another property come up. Would you like to take a look at it? Yep. Right. Like It's that personal one-on-one stuff that drives high conversion. The other... So you need that, Mm -hmm. which you absolutely do. Here's the problem where most agents fail. Tell me. They don't. You're saving this for the end of the podcast. I know. (laughs) Sorry. I hope you made it this far. Tools. They need the tool. They need the system that reminds them. Yeah. When to call, who to call. Mm -hmm. If you have four thousand leads, Mm -hmm. even if you have a hundred, four hundred, you're not going to remember when did I call Tom Ferry to check in to see how, you know, how the house, the home search is coming. You're not going to remember that. Yeah. So what I like to do is it, I like to instruct my agents and have them focus on creating not just drip campaigns, mm-hmm. not the cold, impersonal, mm-hmm. you know, you can tell it's drip. Yeah. Time just, to change your rain gutters. Yep. Yeah. Task management campaigns. So it's just a campaign, for example, on Follow Up Boss mm-hmm. that says, call. Yes. Check in. Yeah. And then you go every day. So Marissa goes into her tasks mm-hmm. every day. All of my coaching clients can go. And it doesn't matter what CRM. Mm-hmm. I mentioned follow-up boss because 
That's yeah. what I use. Yeah. But they go into their tasks and they're like, great. These are all of the people I mm-hmm. need to communicate with yeah. today. And is there a note associated with it? Because if there's a note associated, there I don't want to mem- I don't. I don't want yep. to remember. I want to go. Be. Hey, Emily, just following up to say, remember, in three months we're doing a podcast. Right. Whatever. And know. that should be. And that there should be a note. Mm-hmm. There should be the what you're talking about yes. next. Right. Right. There should always be a next plan. And if you don't have the ability mm-hmm. to create this long, drawn out drip campaign mm-hmm. for seven years for your past clients, then. Mm-hmm. Just focus on the next task. Not one person in your database should mm-hmm. not have the next thing that you need to do. The next time you text, the next time you call, yeah. Yeah. every person. Even just to check in. Every person, yeah. everything. It. Because you don't know mm-hmm. when that, we don't know when somebody's going to buy or sell. But as you like to say, proximity. Proximity, proximity. is important. And, and acknowledge that circumstances change all the time. The guy yep. that, uh, one of our clients, uh, I met him as a hairdresser, right? So he used to cut my hair. He yep. said, oh, by the way, I think I'm, I want to go into real estate. And I was like, well, Perfect. funny, funny you bring that up, yeah. right? Well, so now he cuts my hair, but I think it's really like a free coaching session. Yeah. And, and I pay him for it, right? Yeah. So it's even better. But he meets me at my house, shout out to Chris, and, uh, and literally says to me just a couple of days ago, oh yeah, remember that? Remember that couple I sold that house to that I met knocking on doors and then they ended up buying a $500,000 house, but they were also starting a restaurant? I'm like, yeah. And he's like, well, guess what? They're selling that house because they need the cash from that to fund the restaurant, which is going to make them more money so they can buy a bigger house. And I was like, isn't that funny? We we oftentimes forget the reason why people are moving in 2024 is because circumstances have changed. And yep. if you're not in proximity, if you're yep. not following up, you miss the opportunity and they run into an agent, they meet somebody else. Right. All right. So as we wrap, I want to just okay. go, I want to go back to our list. Okay. First thing I have to do is I have to look at where all my transactions came from. Yep. Don't be lazy, go granule. Yep. Second thing, acknowledge what were the plans that I did that caused it to happen yep. and then convert that into micro marketing plans, Yep. micro marketing plans in order for me to get there. Acknowledge the seasonality of yep. the business when I need to be pushing harder on marketing and lead mm-hmm. generation and then pull it back its head because I'm going to be out showing houses and doing deals and negotiating and all that other stuff. Yep. But then we pivoted to the acknowledgement that people need a partner, right? Especially if you're a super high eye, not real organized, right? Yep. Like then, then acknowledging you need the yin to your yang. And it, keep in mind, it doesn't have to be a person Yes, because I promise you there's at least one person out there. A well, robot? There's all that. Yes, yes. But there's at least one person out here that goes, well, that's great. She can afford it. Yeah. Right. I, I couldn't yes. always. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> couldn't always. Yeah. You know, I, so it doesn't always have to be a person. Sometimes you start with technology mm-hmm. and figure out it just makes life this much easier. Right. And then this much easier. Yeah. And then this much easier until you're at a point where you're like, okay, now I can now I can afford to leverage someone else. Yes. And sometimes that's an assistant or sometimes it's bringing someone in to share that commission with you mm-hmm. if you can't afford to pay them up front. Right. Smart. Smart. So. Okay. This was a powerful show. We got a lot of insights on how to win in 2024. Thank you so much. If they want to follow you, should they follow you on Instagram? Yes. Instagram is going to be the place to come. Yes. It's just Coach Emily Terrell. Yeah. Super simple. Um having such a great relationship and you've lost how much weight like in the last 50.5 pounds 50.5 pounds congratulations okay super proud of you thank you so much for watching think about who you should send this to who should you send this to who needed to hear this message today it would be a loving gesture if you forward it to a friend all right thanks so much for watching we'll see you on the next show